Well, there's nothing too big for my God. Well, there's nothing too big for my God. Well, I'm not going to be discouraged. I'm never going to be depressed. You see, there's nothing too big for God. There's nothing. I said there's not one thing too big for my God.
Kentucky just a few months ago. I was born a bleeder, and I take transfusions every three days to clot my blood. I was missing factor nine in my blood that clots the blood. I had an older brother that passed away at 14 in 1971. And that was very devastating to the family whenever you lose a loved one that young. And it's devastating when you lose them when they're old because I lost my dad. And you know, these hit you. But we was up north, and has anybody been up north? Yeah. What's the furthest north anybody here has been? Chicago. Okay, well we were from Maine, okay? So when you get up there, you walk out in the wintertime, you don't see the light of day until you shovel your way out through the door. And so you can have a rainstorm the night before, and then it snows, this little soft, fluffy snow. And it's like an ice skating rink. And we had a driveway that was on a very long hill. It was a quarter mile long, maybe a little bit less, but not much. And it was a gravel driveway. Well, I went out because I had, I had a four-wheel drive pickup, and I also had an SUV. And I decided to take the four-wheel drive pickup because I knew I could get through the snow and get down there to get bread, milk, eggs, and all that stuff. It was a storm that was not, well, let's put it this way, the meteor meteorologists did not know what they were talking about. I could get on there and do a better job. And I could just, oh, it's going to be cold today. You know? It's just about how it goes. They don't have a clue what's going on. We got a nor'easter that came in and with this fluffy snow, you know. I got out there in that truck and I knew it was kind of slippery, but I went down to the store and I got all the way back and I wanted to shift it, you know, those old, I had a 95 Chevy Silverado, so if you know what I'm talking about, guys. Yeah. Uh, you have to put it in neutral to put it down into low. And I was about 500 feet from my driveway. Put it in a neutral, going real, real slow, no more than five miles an hour. And I went to slip it into four, uh, low four wheel drive the fish, it started to fishtail, and I went off into the ditch. Sunk down into this big ditch, the snow was up to my windows. Now I knew if I was to crawl out, I'd be stuck in the snow. There was no, no way they were gonna get this fat boy out of there. <laughs> so I said, well, I'll just sit here with my cell phone and I'll call AAA, because I have AAA and they'll come get me. A neighbor friend of mine, we, we had horse ranches on both sides of us. The whole road had uh, farms and ranches good old boy came down the road, one of my friends. He said, you look like you're in trouble. I said, how'd you guess? And he says, I got a tow chain, I'll pull you out. He had a nice big new truck. And he started pulling, he said, now hold on. Now I was, I was seat belted in. He threw me all over that cab 16 times before he got me out of there. And on those old trucks, the, the brake pedal was on the left hand side of the you have to put your leg up and push it down. Well, that brake pedal was all the way up and it was about that far from my knee. When he threw me all over that, it kept hitting my, just under my knee. By the time I got to the house, my knee had swelled up three times the size. It was supposed to, it was bleeding inside. Well, me, I was thinking it was just the knee and I'm sorry that I'm taking long, but this is the testimony that I give. And I was thinking it was the knee. Two months later, I wound up in the hospital. Uh, I was not feeling right. I thought I was having a heart attack. My whole body was just aching from my head all the way down to my feet. If I walked, if I carried anything, just one little tiny grocery bag in from the store. My mom looked at me and she said, you don't look right. She said, your color is off. She said, you're going to the emergency room. <coughs> I went to the emergency room and they gave me um, transfusions, and they gave me a blood transfusion, then they gave me an iron transfusion. All of these took, each one took three hours to take. And so I was awake all night. But just before we had uh, the iron transfusion, the doctor from the ER came up, very older doctor, very, very smart. He said, you know, he said, you came in just in time. He said, you was one hour from dying. He said, you lost almost every drop of blood in your body. Wow. It just drained out. Yeah. You know, nothing is impossible with God. That's why I say it's fine. Nothing's too big for my God. Because he has always got his eyes on us. And he's got his hedge of protection built all the way around us. And, you know, I could have went. With, 
Just a thing like that. Yeah. But the devil is in charge. Yeah. God is in charge. Yes. Amen. And if we have him in here, and we are, we are always praying, and we're prayed up. My mom said to me, uh, after she said, you know, she said, God just spoke to me and said that I needed to fast and pray. How long ago was it before that? About a month? Because she could feel something was coming. She didn't know what it was. Could have been anything in the family, because we have a big family. She just, if God speaks to you and says fast and pray, you do yeah. it. Yeah. Because you don't know what's coming. That's right. And so if you're fasted and you're prayed up, yeah. it'll go a little easier. Mm -hmm. You know, the devil will come at you full force. Amen. But Amen. if you've got something backing you up, yeah. not just the word, you've got to fast and you've got to pray. Yeah. Hear God's voice. And Thank God for my mom. Yeah. You know? yeah. And when I went to that hospital, she stayed with me every single day during the COVID. Yeah. And they would only let people in just for a certain amount of time. Yeah. And so I got in there. I was in there a week. And they went up there and they did the scope and all of that stuff to check to see where the internal bleeding was. Well, one thing came out. I had the cleanest colon. <laughs> they said that they had ever seen, which I thought that was great. And everything was fine. They found a little tiny bleeding ulcer, and that was cleared up, you know, and I'm taking a little bit of acid medicine for that. But God is so good. Amen. I could have went that day. I could have went that hour. Yes. I mean, not even the hour. He said I had one hour left to live. He knows he's a doctor. Yes. But the amount of blood that was in my body told him I had one hour left to live. Yeah. Now, if I would have waited and said, no, Mom, I'll go tomorrow, I wouldn't have been here. I would have been with my dad and every, all my loved ones that have gone on. But God saw fit that he Amen. wanted me here. Amen. Yeah. And I think he saw fit because he wanted me to come here and meet you people. Yes. Yeah. Whether I was to sing, whether I'm not to sing. But he has a plan for our life. Amen. And God, there's nothing too big for God. No matter, no matter what it is. I don't care if it's cancer. I don't care if it's diabetes. I don't care what it is. There's nothing too big for God. Amen.